Free Period is a podcast of First Baptist Watauga Student Ministry. For more information about First Baptist Watauga, you can check us out at fbcwatauga.org. Hello and welcome to Free Period, the weekly break you want to take. I'm Kevin Skinner, the Associate Pastor and Student Pastor here at First Baptist Watauga. And I'm Nathan McKendry, your Young Adult Minister and Assistant Student Minister also here at First Baptist Watauga. And this week we are going to be answering the question, do you remember your very first sermon? All right. But first, before we get to that, today I'm going to give Nathan another word or phrase from the 1800s, the good old Victorian era. Bring it on. Uh, I've had fun with this so far. I like it. So Learning new vocabulary. Yeah. So I just have a word for you today, not a phrase, just a word. The word is meter. I think it's pronounced like, like a meter on the street. Uh, is it but spelled it like is that? spelled differently. Oh, okay. It is spelled M E A T E R meter meter. Okay. Yes. Okay. I feel like words by themselves are harder than just the phrases. Possibly. I think so. I mean, I, I think that this word in particular is pretty hard, mm. but we'll see a meter. Oh man. If it's spelled like that, I'm going to vainly, assume it has something to do with actual meat so perhaps a meter is something that's just uh gross just something disgusting a a meter i don't know you're wrong (laughs) (laughs) second you gave me that look i went i'm wrong did wrong (laughs) yes so uh it actually just means coward Oh. So and, and well, it was a negative thing. That's yeah. good to know. <laughs> and so the the website that we're using said that it's a street term for coward. So I I guess not a formal word that was used for cowards, but on the street, you're called. They were meter. calling people so meters. It's, it's Victorian slang. Yeah, Victorian further, slang for a coward. Slang. Wow. And now I have I I would be I interested never, to research that yeah. further as to why why meter. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Well, oh well, let's go ahead and get to today's question. Do you remember your very first sermon? All right, and so as we answer this question, uh, there are a couple of things that we're going to discuss. First, we're each going to talk about our very first sermons. Uh, We're going to talk about the content of that sermon and maybe what we remember about the experience from uh, preaching our very first sermon. Uh, But then we're also going to talk about some other first sermons. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, my first sermon that I preached here at First Baptist Watauga. Uh, And you may be talking about your first sermon somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then uh and then we'll also kind of discuss um uh, kind of how we viewed uh how we preach sermons and how we have improved over the years and, and maybe what helped us improve as well. So uh so I'm gonna let you start first. So yeah. uh do you remember your first sermon? I do. And okay. uh, all the glorious details therein. Um <laughs> And change the font in his computer. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So my first sermon was on Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, which we discovered moments before starting this that right. was, it was also your first yes. sermon. <laughs> yes. It's a great beginner passage, apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> So that's that's where I started. I had the help of uh, good old Zach Hudson. Um, he helped me. We sat down with that passage and, and looked at it. It's a pretty nice little sermon that gets laid out. And, of course, I was a cross-country runner, and so I thought it was helpful. And so I, I used, like, for my illustrations, I used, like, my experience in running. And, and so that worked out rather well. Um, but, yeah, we, we talked about... Um, kind of the, the barriers or, or hurdles or hindrances uh, preventing us from um, doing good, like uh, sin, which we need to let go of, mm-hmm. uh, as well as um, looking to Jesus as, as kind of the answer to that that problem right. in order to keep moving forward. And then, yeah, I, I preached that on a Wednesday night to fellow youth. I was a senior in high school at the time, I think. I think so. Yeah, like the fall of senior year. So, yeah, it was like it was October, in fact. Yeah, um, this was like five years ago now, um, okay. and I preached that to youth, and I don't remember a lot. Anytime I've gone back to like rewatch it, I think I was wearing like dad jeans and a Captain America t-shirt, and there was this lady that walked in, 
that people that tell me about, I didn't notice her during the sermon, but supposedly a random stranger lady that none of us have ever met since or prior walked in during that sermon, walked around the camera and sat down in the back. And before Zach could go talk to her to see who this person was, he like tried to say something to her and she got up and walked away and left before we ever found out who she was. And if you go look at the recording, she does not show up in the cameras. At all. At all. What are you implying here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying it was spooky. <laughs> well, I do actually remember that part of the story. I don't remember your first sermon. I'm guessing I was not in there. My guess Maybe is that it was taking place on a night of Awana back when I was the children's minister. It was October on a Wednesday, so okay. probably. Yeah. <laughs> Almost so, certainly. <laughs> so I was not back there for your first sermon, so I don't remember your first sermon. However, I do remember the story of the woman, and uh, and Zach said that he followed her like outside, and he, or he went out side afterwards and saw her like walking down the street so she was mysterious but i don't think there's any implications of anything Vampire. spooky <laughs> spooky happening Didn't show up in the camera, <laughs> i don't know so, i think she was from the future whatever yeah. she wanted to come back see my first sermon yeah maybe i become a big deal <laughs> it's your uh it's your grandchild in oh, the future that has it. traveled My back to watch your very first sermon that's brilliant <laughs> so i'm not a big deal it's just a big deal to her <laughs> <laughs> true yeah that, that's good enough for me <laughs> how about wow. you how about your first sermon this yeah is a fun podcast so already. obviously we have already talked about how we discovered that Hebrews 12, 1 through, yeah, I think you said you preached 12, 1 through 3. Right. I'm pretty sure that I only preached Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hmm. Uh, Still good. And so, you know, for, for me, you said that you had Zach that wrote the sermon with you that really helped right. you through yeah, that. Yeah, he was, he was with me the whole time. And I will say that I had nobody. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> That's and, a different experience. <laughs> and so how I arrived at at Hebrews 12, 1, and 2, uh, I I really, I mean, nobody helped me to get there. You know, we've talked about in the past how, how sometimes the hardest part of being asked to preach uh, is picking a passage. And so I think probably why I picked that passage is, is I felt like it would be fairly easy to talk about uh, throwing off the, the sin that entangles us, mm-hmm. that, that yeah. holds us back. Uh, certainly, uh, that should be easy to talk about. Uh, so the kind of the scenario of how I ended up preaching that week, my first sermon was preached during the summer. I was a summer intern, um, in a youth ministry and I was a sophomore in college or I had actually just finished my sophomore year of college. I was about to be a junior and, uh, and so the youth pastor was actually going to children's camp with the children's minister and all the children. And, and so he had asked me to stay behind and, uh, lead youth that Wednesday night. Cool. And so, but he did not like tell me, Hey, this would be a great passage to preach on. Uh, I don't know if he did. I, I don't remember if he did sermon series or anything like that. Like we typically do now in youth. And so the hard part was picking the passage. I picked the passage and also at that time, honestly, I really had no idea how to write a sermon. Uh, I believe that I took my first preaching class in college because I was a practical ministry major uh, in college. I think I took my first preaching class my junior year. Wow, that's towards uh, the end. Or even my senior year. I can't remember. It was it was wow. either my junior or senior year. And so But you so you had not had it at this time. I had I had not had a preaching okay. class. So I had no idea right. how to preach a sermon. Uh honestly, in my mind, I just thought that preachers were so talented that they just picked a passage and got up and were able to talk about it. Uh, and so mm-hmm. I picked a passage. I wrote, I think, some bullet points down on a sheet of paper, maybe like three bullet points because we're Baptist, right? <laughs> I, I almost certainly had three points. <laughs> so Yeah, so I, I wrote some three bullet points down on a sheet of paper and just kind of assumed 
that when I got up there in the moment, everything else was going to come to me Hmm. and I would be able to preach, you know, a 20, 25 minute sermon uh, with these three bullet points written on a sheet of paper. Bold. <laughs> Very bold. 20 to 25 <laughs> minutes? Oh, my goodness. Which, uh, some, some which I, did not think was, I did not think was bold. I just thought that's what happened. Normal. I mean, super just naive, especially. Common. I mean, so, so silly. Uh, so if you're out there and you think that three points are going to get you through 20 or 25 minutes... Or I I, without preparation. I mean, I can preach a longer sermon with three points. Well, sure, but you've got tons of, like, sub points and illustrations right. at that point. So, that, yes, there is, there's a lot of preparation. So if you think you're going to be able to get up and preach a sermon with zero preparation. And zero uh, experience. I do think zero Dennis experience. could probably get up and do oh, the three of course. points. Sermon. Yeah. And has most certainly done that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, I mean, with zero experience, first sermon, it's your first go, and you've never, you didn't prepare much other than writing a few points down. Because um, usually we're faster. Like, we end up talking faster the first one. Yes. Did you blow through it? I'm stomping uh, on your story. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I it's hard for me to say that I blew through it because I ha- really had nothing prepared other than my bullet points. However, I will say that my sermon was five minutes long, tops. Ah, okay. So, I mean, it was a very short sermon, right. but to say that I blew through it's hard hard to even say that because uh, what was there uh, of my content to really blow through? <laughs> I had nothing prepared. <laughs> so, I mean, I got up, and, uh, and so we had a handheld mic, and my hand was shaking the whole time holding Ooh. the mic. My lip was my my top lip was quivering like I was Elvis Presley the whole time I was talking for that five minutes. No recording. There's no recording. Uh, And I mean, this is before easy recording technology. I mean, there were camcorders and stuff, but you still have have tapes and everything. (laughs) Full hand thing. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, so yeah. So there's no recording, but I mean, it 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 was terrible. Plus, I mean the. There was no real like intro. There was no real conclusion. Ooh. It was just like me kind of talking about these two verses, Hebrews twelve one and two, and uh, and then so I I got through my points, and I said this was my conclusion. I said to the students, "Well, that's all I got. Who wants to go to someone's house and watch a movie?" <laughs> 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 and so that's what we ended up doing. I bet they love that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it ended up being a uh, a fun cool. fellowship uh, because we we had some parents that were in there, and so they were like, "Sure, they volunteered their house," and and we all went to their house and we How watched many youth a movie. Was this? Uh, quite a few youth, probably you know twenty five or thirty youth. Wow, you just all stuffed into a house somewhere and watched a movie. Yeah, that sounds like. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that kind of a yeah. event night. That sounds fun. It, it was fun, uh, but uh, yeah, quite right. yeah. yeah, quite a quite a terrible sermon. All right, so let's let's get to now uh, other first sermons. Okay, so tell us about your first sermon somewhere else. Okay, well, that's a little difficult. <laughs> I never really worked anywhere else. There was really well. I don't mean at an another place you've worked but have you preached somewhere else ever yes so i i would say i i have preached um probably one thing that i would call a sermon uh elsewhere other than weddings weddings is kind of the other thing that i've done so i I preached one time uh, i i interned over at pioneer drive with uh the pastor of the contemporary side of the service at the time, which was John Witten. He's n- he's actually now the senior pastor of the whole church over there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so I interned under him for just a semester, and, and he gave me a Wednesday night to preach in front of um, a, a, a bit of a crowd. I couldn't tell you how many people were, but they had a Wednesday night deal where a lot of the adults— so I got to preach in front of adults. That was the first time I've ever preached in front of adults, not youth. And um, I think I had taken like a, a youth sermon that I preached to— our youth maybe Mm -hmm. over love God and love neighbor. Um, So the good Samaritan story I may have used. And I think I even used, it was like a Christmas sermon when I preached it to youth. And so it was like 
April when I preached it to these people, but I thought, nah, Christmas is still fine. So I, okay. I gave them a bunch of Christmas illustrations, and they seemed to enjoy it. And that went really well. And then I preached two weddings, and both of those were with manuscripts at that point. I made sure to get all of that written down because it was going to be a little bigger of a deal, practiced it a lot. Sure. And, yeah, I mean, affecting people's direct memories forever. So I thought okay. I should be prepared. Yeah. But those those were my outside of FBC Watauga sermon situations. Okay. So my first sermon that we just talked about did not happen here at First Baptist Watauga. That happened up in, up in Oklahoma when I was in college. So my first sermon here at First Baptist Watauga uh, for, like, the main church service is, is what I'll talk about now because— uh, I did preach a first sermon uh, in youth on a Wednesday night, and then I ended up preaching for Disciple Now uh, back in 2011. And at that time, I was the college and young adult leader here. Uh, I was not at that time yet the children's minister. And so uh, so since I was leading the Disciple Now or, or the guest speaker for Disciple Now, we always let the guest speaker for Disciple Now preach that Sunday morning. Right. And so because of that, I was preaching here at First Baptist Watauga. I was already the college and young adult leader here at this church, but I was preaching for my first time on a Sunday morning uh, for the entire congregation of First Baptist Watauga. And at that time, the church as a whole was in a series titled the Bible Alive 365, where we were spending an entire year walking through the Bible. And because we were in that series, Dennis asked me to use the passage that we were going to be in for the Bible Alive 365 and and tie that into the theme for Disciple Now uh, so that... To, we could kill two birds with one stone, so it yeah. wouldn't throw the the series off, right. and uh, and it would also go along with disciple now. And so uh, I did that, but that ended up meaning that the very first sermon I ever preached here at First Baptist Watago was out of the book of Leviticus. Now I can't remember the spe- specific passage at this moment that I preached on, but uh, I thought that the book of Leviticus was uh, a bit of a challenging book to be preaching out of, especially for my very first sermon uh, at a church. I don't know if I would just outwardly choose it. It worked. It worked out well. Cool. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that was my first sermon here at First Baptist Wataga. So let me ask you now, looking back at you know your first sermon ever, the first time you okay. preached ever, uh, how would you say that you have developed since then in your preaching now? Just personal analysis. Uh, how have you improved, and maybe what are some of those things that you have done to improve? Mm, okay. Well, I think I've got a little... When I watch the videos, I think I've got a little better stage presence than I used to. Okay. Um, I just think I'm, I look way more comfortable up there um, than I did that, that first time around, because we have the first time actually on recording, and I've, I've watched it, and it's... I don't know. <laughs> don't care for it um i like it less now than i did then (laughs) but i also have worked hard to make sure i do better about introductions Mm -hmm. i'm one that just wants to like all right let's read the text and start throwing my points at you and i'm like no that introduction is really actually important um and and illustrations as well i think i've gotten a little bit better about letting myself tell stories uh, and, and weaving that into the sermon um yeah, I mean, I've, I've done other things. Oh, well, I mean, most notably, I have switched from an outline-type preaching to manuscript preaching. And so I'll okay. basically, I've, I, really all I've done is add a step to it is because I would make the outline and then I'd practice it a couple times. Well, now when I make the outline and I practice it, I practice it by writing it down. Right. And so I just kind of preach to myself in my office and write. <laughs> and, and that way I kind of get a manuscript and, and then I practice that a couple of times and that's just been easier to force me to practice it. So. Okay. How about you? Yeah. So, uh, uh certainly, uh, considering my first sermon was a five minute sermon that was very ill prepared. Uh, I would definitely say that I have improved in preaching. Uh, plus I've been preaching now, uh, for off and on for 18 years. Uh, Because my first sermon was back in 2002. Now, I did not preach 
all the time uh, for quite a quite a few period of years. But uh, certainly, as I've been on staff here at First Baptist Watauga for the last ten years, I have generally been preaching at least once a week for ten years. And so, I would That's definitely true. say that I have improved. Uh, Part of that improvement is just with experience, and I would say that that's probably the same for you too. The more you do it, the better you get. Uh, but yeah, so one of the things that I that I do, uh, I we record our, our student ministry sermons, so one of the things I do is I go back and I watch every sermon, uh, kind of like a f- football coach with uh, a team, oh, yeah. and, yeah. and I kind of analyze Play and... Decks. and uh, just do some self criticism, not not in a self deprecating way, but self criticism to uh, to see how I can improve. Um, look for the improvements, not yeah, the failures. Look, well, I mean, look, <laughs> look for look for maybe how I failed in some areas and how I can improve that improve that in the future. Yeah. Uh, but then I one of the things that I've done for years is I have listen to multiple preachers on like podcasts with the intention of uh, seeing what I uh, kind of what I glean as that's a good technique or I really like how they they formulated that sermon and so kind of pulling from different techniques of, of preachers to uh, kind of form my own preaching style. And, and again, I think some of that just happens naturally along the way. The more you preach, you're going to kind of grow into uh, a good uh, preaching style for yourself. Uh, but it, it, all of that just kind of takes, once again, just practice. And, and the more you do it, the, yeah. the, the better you get. And, and so I think that for both of us, you know, if we look 10 years from now, hopefully we'll be able to look back at this podcast even and say, uh, you know what? We're better preachers than we were ten years ago. Praise the Lord. So, but all that being said, yeah. uh, even if we do become better preachers, uh, none of this is for our own glory. Our desire is that we become better for the glory of God. That that we certainly uh, simply become better communicators of God's word for uh, those that are hearing to be pointed back to God, not for our own glory at all. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Uh, just that, yeah, I mean, my, uh, again, I interned under John Witten. He told me once, uh, but speaking of sermon preparation, he's like, God can use a crooked stick, but he can use a straight stick better. (laughs) So he was trying to encourage me to, you know, God can use your horrible sermons, but it'd be better if you prepared more and (laughs) and gave your all. Yeah, so absolutely. That's good. All right. All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Free Period. Join us again next week as we answer the question, Are you a morning or a night person? Bye. I hope that you enjoyed today's podcast, and I'd love to meet you in person. If you're a student between 7th and 12th grade, you can join us on Wednesday nights for midweek at First Baptist Latauga. You can also join us on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. for growth groups and 10.50 a.m. for worship.